I want to welcome you to Canyon Creek Church today. Uh, wherever you're viewing from, you might be viewing from our Saturday night campus, our campus on the Palouse, or maybe you're watching from Mill Creek. I want to tell you that it's great that you're here with us today. Um, we are in the middle of a series called The Pursuit of Happiness, where we are looking at the Beatitudes. So I want you to grab your Bibles, and I want you to turn to the book of Matthew, uh, and we're going to start reading from verse five, from chapter 5 in just a moment. Um, before we begin, how many of you ever get tired of all the dumb things you see floating around Facebook? Uh, um, it's amazing to me the things that people tag me in on Facebook. Um, it can be some ridiculous video that they found somewhere on YouTube somewhere, or they have made some picture of a cat that they want to tag me in, but last week officially took the cake. I mean, I couldn't handle it anymore. People kept tagging me in that dress picture. Here's the picture. And the question everyone kept asking is, what colors do you see? Do you see black and blue? Or do you see gold and white? Now, first off, I, I got to ask this. Who cares? But second, how can any person not see gold and white in that picture? And so just for the sake of argument, I want to ask today, raise your hand if when you look at that picture, you see black and blue. Okay. Raise your hand if you see gold and white. Now, I'm going to say very honestly, the gold and white people have normal vision. If you see black and blue, you need to go to the optometrist now. Because something is wrong with you. The series... On the Beatitudes, Pursuit of Happiness, we are discovering how you and I can live a blessed life. How we can have a happy life. Or how we can have a rich, full, meaningful life. And as we've read through all of these different Beatitudes, we've learned that you can have a rich, full, meaningful life. If you're poor in spirit, you can have a rich, full, meaningful life if you mourn, if you're meek. You can have a rich, full, meaningful life if you hunger and thirst for righteousness. And then last week, we discovered that you can have a rich, full, meaningful life if you are a person that naturally shows mercy to other people. And today, we're going to look at the next beatitude, and Jesus simply says, you want to be blessed, you want to be happy, you want to have a rich, full, meaningful life. That happens when you see God. Matthew 5, 8 says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. As I've done every week, I've also read the message translation of this verse, and the message says, you're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and your heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. I want to ask everyone to bow your heads, close your eyes. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Everyone say, dear Jesus, Speak to my heart. Change my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Meaning that you and I are blessed. You and I are happy. You and I can have a rich, full, meaningful life when we see. But we can only see if we're pure in heart. So what I want to do today is I want to break this verse down into two areas. And the first one is I want to answer the question, what does it really mean to be pure in heart? If we're blessed 
when we see, but we see when, we ha- when we're pure in heart, it should cause you to ask, well, what does it mean to be pure in heart? Because I want to be blessed, which means I want to see. I want to have a rich, full, meaningful life. I want to see God. So what does it mean to be pure in heart? And then after that, then I want to talk about what it means to really see God. But first, um, I actually want to start with what it means to see God. What does it mean to see? What does it mean to see God? When Jesus said, you're blessed when you see God, what does that mean? I mean, uh, we can't see God tangibly. I, I mean, if we could all literally see God standing in front of us, uh, I think none of us would doubt. I think all of us would believe. I mean, we, we read in the Old Testament where Moses spent a moment seeing God pass by and from that point on had to cover his face because he radiated the glory of God so much that people couldn't even look at him. So what does it mean to see God? Um, that word see in the original Greek in which it was written is actually a word called orao. And the word popped up on the screen. That is a word that is used 449 different times in the New Testament. And it's a word that to see, it means you can see both figuratively and you can see literally. Um, I, I want to talk about seeing things a little bit more here. And I'm actually going to show you a couple more images that have floated around the internet uh, over the last couple years. They're probably ones that are familiar for you. So we're going to pop up this picture first. Now, I just have a question. How many of you, when you look at this picture, you see an old lady? How many of you, when you look at this picture, you see a young lady? Now, if some of you see a young lady and you don't see an old lady, stare at it again. And if some of you see an old lady and you don't see a young lady, try and fix your eyes and step back and picture that young lady. But what do you see? When you look at that picture, what do you see? Here's another picture that has floated around the internet. Go ahead and pop that one up. Um. I ask people often when they look at this what they see. In fact, I I did it the day that I recorded this message. And I've heard some people say it looks like a skull. I've had other people say it looks to me like a stormtrooper. In fact, one of my media guys even said it kind of looks like Darth Vader. Uh, But if you look closely, you can see Jesus in that image. So my question is, what do you see? Orao means to see, but it more in-depthly means you not only see, but you perceive, you experience. And I think here is the critical word, the critical meaning that Jesus had when he said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. That word orao, Greek for to see, actually means To recognize means that you are blessed when you see God. You are blessed when you recognize God. When you look at something and you look past maybe what it is on the outside. But you see Jesus in the midst of all of these circumstances. Blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. And it means this. It means You will recognize God when other people miss him. And to see means you recognize God in creation. You recognize God in circumstances and in situations. And have you ever, um, have you ever met someone that uh, is always oblivious to everything that's going on around them? They're just completely oblivious. I mean, then you have some friends 
that are oblivious. Maybe you've had this conversation with them. Um, You're hanging out with a group of people, and they start telling this amazing story of something that happened to them. And as they're telling you the story, they're telling it to you as if it's the very first time you've ever heard the story before. And they say, man, I met this person, and then this happened, and then this happened. And the whole time, you're sitting there, hello, yes, I was there with you. You didn't even know I was there with you. It's kind of like that person that you meet in school. Uh, You meet them maybe your junior year of high school. You think they're a brand new student to the school, and you're just trying to be friendly. So you walk up, say, hey, my name's Brandon. Man, it's so awesome that you're at this school. And then they look at you and say, I've been in your class since we were in third grade. Have you ever met someone that is totally oblivious to everything that's happening around them. And there are people sitting in our church today that are oblivious to all of the times Jesus shows himself faithful. They're oblivious to all the times God is present in the midst of their crud or He's present in the midst of their trial or present in the midst of their circumstances. They uh, miss God in nature. They miss God in their life. They miss God when they look at their kids. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And some people, they're oblivious to God. Uh, I can meet with them, and they can tell me about a situation, and I can say, wow, isn't it amazing how God intervened there? Oh, it's so obvious seeing where God was there, and they're like, I never thought of that before. Church, you are blessed when you see God. In John 3.36, John the Baptist, who led the way for Jesus, He basically encouraged uh, the religious people to repent because the Messiah is coming. And he described the Messiah this way. He said, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life. Church, you are blessed when you see God. So I think the question should be next. So if I'm blessed when I see God, how do I avoid being oblivious? How do I make sure that I don't miss God in all the situations and circumstances in my life? How do I not miss God in his creation? How do I not miss him? Well, Jesus said, you need to be pure in heart. So the pure in heart see God. So what does it mean then to be pure in heart? That word pure in the original Greek is a word, again, that word will pop up on the screen. It's katharos. And it means, and I want you to catch this, because I could literally teach on purity for a two-month series. But I'm going to tell you enough about purity today to make it dangerous for you. But I think there's really two keys that Jesus was trying to emphasize. There's two aspects of a pure heart that he's trying to emphasize. And if you dig deep into that word katharos, it means to cleanse one's mind and emotions. It means uh, to be clean, to be free from any contaminating substance. Some scholars have uh, defined purity here as meaning to make pure By cleansing from dirt, contamination, and filth. And how they used to do that, in fact, they still do it today. Um, They will refine something with fire. Because fire burns away all of the impurities. And it burns away all of the filth. And it burns away all of the contamination. And uh, if you uh, were saved in the 90s, you can remember a really overdone worship song that people used to sing it seems like every single week at church for 10 years called refiner's fire 
And really the meaning of that song comes from the understanding of purity that God is able to kind of chisel away at all of these hard places in our life and purify our hearts and purify our minds. So to be pure means to cleanse from dirt, contamination, filth, to be refined by fire. But it also refers to being unmixed. I think this is really important. You see, something that is pure means it doesn't have a double allegiance. And I really believe that there are two aspects of purity that Jesus is trying to bring home here when he says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And if you want to be someone who sees God, you need to evaluate yourself and say, am I someone who has a pure heart? So what does it mean to have a pure heart? It means, number one, you have a heart that isn't contaminated. Meaning you haven't allowed all of this dirt and all of this filth into your life. Um, I am wearing today my wedding ring. Um, You might notice that I often don't wear a wedding ring and it is... Not a reflection on my love for Di. I am madly in love with my wife. Um, But because I work out, I will take my ring off. And because I'm a dude, I forget to put it back on. But since some of my staff pointed out that I didn't wear a wedding ring last week, here I am wearing a wedding ring. Now, this ring is white gold. It was refined by fire. Took out all of the impurities of this ring. All the dirt and all of the filth, and it became pure 24 karat gold. This is the most pure gold that you can find, but that only happens when it is refined by fire. You see, a a pure heart isn't full of filth. A pure heart isn't dirty. Be honest with yourself. I mean, what do you allow into your life? What do you allow into your heart? I mean, when Pastor Brandon's not around, are you dirty? I had somebody recently tell me, uh, in fact, they said it to Di and I, they said, well, I like being around this person because when I'm around this person, I can drink and not feel guilty and I can cuss and not feel guilty. But when I'm around you guys, I feel like I have to act a certain way. Can I tell you the problem is not me and Di? Because frankly, I mean, hey, you want to drink around me? I don't care. Um, You want to cuss around me? I don't care. But you might need to pause and ask, why is it if I do those things around Brandon and die, I feel guilty? Since I don't care, it doesn't have anything to do with me, it has everything to do with you. You have dirt in your life. Is there a part of your heart that's contaminated? Because to have a pure heart means uh, you've removed blemishes, you've removed dirt, you've removed impurities. Now, I I, want to say this. It is impossible for us to keep all of the dirt and all the crud out of our life. It's literally impossible. Um, You're going to mess up. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to think thoughts you shouldn't think. You're going to say something you shouldn't say. You're going to do things you shouldn't do. That's why Jesus went to the cross and died for us. You see, he died on the cross so that you and I would have an opportunity to repent and ask forgiveness. And, you know, we've got to stop seeing things as people imposing guilt on us and say, maybe God's looking out for me. Maybe that is conviction from the Holy Spirit. And if I simply say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for everything that I've done. And then he redeems my heart. He purifies my heart, redeems my mind. He purifies my mind. There is a a great psalm that I uh, quote every time I pray. And it is this. It says, this is how I start off every prayer. I say, search my heart, O God. Test and know my anxious thoughts and see if there be any wickedness in me. And if there is, lead me in the way of everlasting. That's me saying, Lord, I realize that I am imperfect, that I screw up, 
that I allow all this dirt and filth into my life. And sometimes I do it and I'm oblivious to it. I don't see what I'm doing. I don't recognize what I'm doing and how it's affecting me. And I just want to throw my hands up and say, I am not perfect. I need you, Jesus. Please forgive me. And he redeems my heart. You see, having a pure heart is having a heart that isn't contaminated. David said this in Psalms 24. He said, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? So basically, who can climb a mountain and see God? He says, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart. It is is really difficult to recognize God in your circumstances and situation if you have intentionally allowed a lot of garbage into your life. Is there some filth that you honestly need to remove? Are some things that you've allowed into your life that have affected your ability to recognize God in your circumstances and situations, to recognize his presence when you're at church, to hear his voice when you read his word? Is there something you've allowed in your life that you need to remove? To see God. You cannot approach him with dirty hands and a contaminated heart. The second aspect of purity that I think Jesus is referring to is not only is our heart not to be contaminated, but our heart isn't to be divided. You see, one of the definitions of purity is it means that purity means to be unmixed, it means to have no double allegiance. Now, here's what I know today that I've been driving some of you bonkers. That from the moment the video started, you have been annoyed because I'm wearing my Raiders jersey. And the fact that I am a Raiders fan irritates you. It it was funny because uh, I put my jersey on, we record this video on Wednesday, and I came into the office and someone uh, from our church saw me wearing the jersey, and this is what they did. They saw the jersey and they just, just walked right by. So I know that this bothers you. And some of you, it doesn't bother you that I'm a Raider fan. In fact, you find it amusing that I'm a Raider fan because of how terrible the Raiders have been for 10 years. No, what bothers you is that I am not only a Raiders fan, but I am also a Seahawks fan. And it drives you nuts because you don't understand how can Pastor Brandon like the Raiders And also like the Seahawks. And so people will ask me this question often. In fact, I'll probably get asked it this weekend. Um, And they usually say this. So if the Seahawks and the Raiders play each other, who do you root for? And my comment is, whoever wins. Um, And then they say, no, no, no. Really, if uh, a miracle happened, and they're always trying to be funny. um, And they say, and the Raiders actually make the Super Bowl. And they're playing the Seahawks. What jersey would you wear? So I get asked that all the time because people are frustrated that I seem to have this double allegiance. That I seem to have this mixed heart when it comes to my allegiance in football. Did you know that many of us don't recognize that we have a divided heart when it comes to Jesus? You see, having a pure heart isn't just about being clean. It's about being single-minded. It's about being unmixed. Has no double allegiance. Jesus said himself in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, he said, you need to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all of your mind. It doesn't say you need to love the Lord your God with 50% of your heart. It doesn't say God only needs 98% of your heart. It says you love the Lord your God with all of your heart. Now, I don't know how your 
wife would respond, fellas, if you said, well, honey, um, I, I'm willing to be married to you, but know that this other woman, she'll always have a place in my heart. People don't want you to have a divided heart. James 4.8 says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Man, what an amazing promise in God's word. Man, what you need to do, if you want to sense the presence of God, you need to be willing to come near to God yourself. Because if you come near to him, he will come near to you. But we always stop at that part of the verse. But James goes on. He says, wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your minds, you double-minded. You know, People will tell you all the time. In fact, culture says um, they don't have a problem with you believing in Jesus. They don't have a problem with you believing in God. Um, but culture will say, but, you know, there's all these different ways to heaven. And there's all these different gods. And there's all these different ideas about God. I mean, some people worship the Mormon God. Some people worship the Jehovah Witness God. Some people have an allegiance to Muhammad or Buddha some people they believe in mother earth but as long as you really believe what you believe and you believe it fully it's right for you and then there's people um, they're like polytheistic which means they believe in all of the above they believe that all of these are a different path that leads to heaven well um, here's what Jesus said he said I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see, what is a pure heart? A pure heart is solely devoted to Jesus. If you're here today and you think there's all these different paths to heaven, I, I hate to tell you, you're wrong. I mean, Jesus makes it clear, I am the way. The truth and the life. I will not share an allegiance with Buddha. I will not share an allegiance with your ego. I will not share an allegiance with your kids, with your job, with your dreams. I will not share an allegiance with your motorcycle or your boat or your hobbies or your thrills. I want all of your heart. And you realize that Jesus wants it all. It's what does he say? It says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart. That's what it means to have a pure heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I mean, if you have a heart that is free of contamination, that is devoted to Jesus, you will recognize him in your life. I mean, you will walk through the everyday mundane part of life and you will see Jesus in your circumstances. You will see Jesus in other people. You will see Jesus in everything that happens. You will recognize him. I mean, you want to have a rich, full meaningful life church you know that it is impossible to have if you're oblivious to god in your life if you're here today and you want to be honest and say you know what i am kind of oblivious man i, I feel like i miss god a lot is there some dirt that you need to clean up if you find yourself today oblivious to God and you feel like you're missing God, is your allegiance divided? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes.